All right, so we are recording. So a couple things that you'll want to know. Again, I am Kim Godwin. I am an instructional designer with MTSU Online, uh, and Jennifer Ponder is with us today. She is also with um, the FITSE, and she is going to be monitoring our chat because, um, as we were discussing, I am not great at doing both of those at one time. Um, so I get distracted by things that blink, so I have to kind of turn that off for me or I forget what I was talking about. Um, we have a couple of um, events coming up in the FITSE in the next couple of weeks that you might be interested in. Um, Jennifer is actually doing one um, on Wednesday the 11th, so 1111, she is doing one on um, authentic alternative assessment. So you should definitely check that out if you are available. And then Sherry has one coming up on Friday about captioning your Zoom and Panopto. And then there's more coming up in the future. So just kind of make sure that you're checking in on that stay on course faculty calendar about upcoming trainings and things. Uh, we have some more packed into November and then we'll be taking a little break for a couple months um, <laughs> while all of us get like seven weeks off between the end of fall and the beginning of spring. But if there are topics or things that you're interested in, uh, make sure that you let Sheila or one of us know uh, what those are so that we can start planning those for the spring. Uh, so. Make sure you're checking out that calendar, get registered. There's some great stuff coming up. Uh, we also have a submission view cheat sheet that Tara created that we will be emailing out to everyone after this. It has some, some great information and in some steps step-by-step step, um, as well as some screenshots. Uh, so that should kind of help y'all just a little bit with some of that information. Um, so today I'm gonna go through uh, a little bit about in quizzes, um, there's a couple options in there that talk about hints and feedback that are within your, your quiz setup and within your question setup. So we're going to talk about that a little bit today, and then we're going to talk about different types of submission views and what those submission views mean in order for your students to see the questions and their answers um, and right answers and wrong answers and things like that. Um, so that's what we're going to be covering today. Um, just kind of a little bit of my, uh, Kim always says this is the beginning of every conversation about quiz. As you're going into your quizzes and your creation of your quizzes, think about your quizzes um, in the long term. What is it that you want your quizzes to be evaluating? Um, what is the level that this quiz is going to count for in your overall grades, um, high stakes, low stakes, um, and really processing some of that information. I know Jennifer will talk a lot about some of those activities too when she has her presentation next week. Um, but some of the things that we, we hear about and some of the things that we run into um, are some of those concerns that people have with um, how do we create these in a way that students are uh, being honest uh, and fully engaged in their questions? And some of those have to do with how we structure our quizzes to begin with and what we are looking to measure uh, and, and what type of measurement um, is, is the objective for our class to be about uh, memorization or is the objective for our class to be about application of information? So really kind of thinking about those things in terms of your quiz setup. Um, and that also has to do with your submission views and how those submission views uh, work and their, their purpose and their value. If you are using your quizzes as a, a formative assessment and students are using it as they go and they're looking at themselves and they're looking at what they need to continue working on, then having the information open and viewable pretty much all the time is, that's fine because we want them to learn the information and we want them to be able to continue processing it. Um, if we are using our quiz application in ways of we want you to know how to apply it. So even if that information gets out to the public, if it is about the information and them applying the information or utilizing the information, well, they're going to have to learn it anyway to be able to apply it later in your quiz. So quiz questions being available and students having access to them again is not a huge issue um, because what we want is for them to apply. So really thinking about those things as you're um, determining how you're going to set your quizzes up and what you're going to do with your submission views, it ultimately does have to do with the goal of your activity. Okay, so on that, I'm going to do some screen sharing and uh, then we're going to talk about quizzes.
Okay, so can everybody see um, my screen okay? Um, I tried to enlarge it because we have some strange screens. Yes. So, Okay, thank you. Um, so um, I try to make the font a little bit bigger so that you can see everything pretty well. So I am logged into one of my development shells as me as a faculty member. Um, so we're gonna go into quizzes real quick um, and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about what those look like. So if you actually do have um, quizzes open and you want to go along with us as we're talking about this, I'm actually gonna take you through um, really quickly setting up a quiz, but we're not gonna go into a lot of detail in it. It's only because I want to show you a couple of things in terms of hints and feedback. So um, if you're setting up a new quiz, click new quiz. Um, we're going to name it because you got to name everything in D2L. Um, and we're going to look at, um, specifically with this setup, I want to look at hints and I want to look at creating automatic feedback. So when you're setting up a quiz, if you want to add hints to your questions, um, one of the things that you'll want to do on this very first page, you'll scroll down be below the questions, you'll scroll down below the description and introduction, as a side note, don't forget in your description and introduction to always remind them to log in through the quick links on the MTSU homepage, not Pipeline, because Pipeline, Pipeline logs out um, and times out and students can lose some access that way. So we're going to scroll on down through this information um, and just take a look at everything. But right here under optional advanced properties, and it's way down near the bottom. Um, last time we were talking about some security things and and making decisions about that, we talked about uh, when you disable right click, it means that they can't highlight something and then right click and it says search Google. Um, so if you click that, it, it disables their ability to right click. But the one right above it, allow hints, allows for there to be hints in your questions. And so I'm gonna show you what those look like, but if you have typed in hints, you need to make sure you turn on the hints or nobody's going to see them. So um, allow hints is pretty important if you're going to use the hints feature. So we're going to create a question that we actually use hints and feedback. And then I'm going to actually show you in the other assessments that I have in the course what those can look like. I'm really just setting one up with you so that you can see. Um, so we're adding a new question. Um, and we're going to do a multiple choice. And let's see, um, here's this one. It's coming up. So, you know, we'll just stick that out there. Um, is November 10th. And it's 1111. Oh, that should be an 11. Um, and 1112 and 1113. So these are our options, okay? Um, so I want to add some hints to help students know what this is um, and where they might be able to find this information. Uh, so for me, I'm adding a hint. You go to options and you click add hint. And that actually opens up the opportunity for you to put this information in there, what your hint might be. So my hint is um, the same day as Jennifer, oops, Jennifer's presentation. So if you were paying attention earlier and I told you what day Jennifer's presentation was on, yes. then you know that uh, my birthday is actually next Wednesday. Um, so my right answer is that, but if you uh, wanted students to be able to kind of have a hint to where go look for things. So if you are using um, open note, open book, uh, open resources for your quiz assessments. Sometimes you may want to put a hint in there that says something about um, that this information can be found um, in the textbook chapter or this information was discussed in our course lecture um, on the topic on this day or you know whatever it is that you want to put in there as your hint. Um, if it's something that is very specific to a process or a policy or something like that, you could actually reference where that information is. So you would put that in there. It just kind of gives the student a hint as to where to go look for that information. Um, so again, um, cause this is, I'm just such a big believer in this. Um, always do the random 
randomize your answer order when you're using multiple choice um, because it gives you the opportunity to um, keep students having different versions of your test. So, and I saw somebody had a raised hand. So did we need to take a second to answer? Shannon, did you have a question? I just put it in the chat. My question was, do those hints show up automatically or are they called up by the student? So it's, it's, it's called up like when you go over it. Um, it's called up by the student. So, and I can show you that because um, I'm gonna, I'm only showing you in this one, and then I'm gonna show you what they look like once they're created. So I'll show you all that in just a second. Um, in this as well, if you want to add some automatic feedback, you can actually add automatic feedback to the questions so that when students get submit their quiz, they actually can get that information that said, or as they go, actually, it tells them whether or not it was correct. So for this one, I would type in correct and it would show up um, for the students as, yep, you got the right one or um, not quite. <laughs> um, so you can put as much feedback or as little feedback as you want. You could put correct, you could put incorrect. Um, this is especially helpful uh, if you are allowing students to take quizzes multiple times. Um, if you're having two or three attempts, that they will see that they got it incorrect. Um, now, if you have the randomized answer, it doesn't mean they can remember that it was, uh, the answer is B, because next time the answer may not be B. Um, it may be D, or however many you have. Uh, so that is what that looks like as a basic. So I'm going to save that one just so that y'all could see what that looks like. And then we're going to go back to our quizzes and I'm going to show you um, some additional examples of uh, what those look like, what feedback and um, feedback, feedback and hints looks like within a quiz. So um, I'm going to take a look at this one and we're going to preview it. And then I'm actually going to show you in a little bit some student information uh, where a fake student has taken the test. And I will actually take the test to show you some submissions as well. So, um, so I'm going to start this quiz and we're going to go through this quiz. And it is structured exactly the same way that it would be in student view. This is what it looks like. So if you're curious what it's going to look like, you can always click that arrow next to the quiz name and click preview. And it will show you what your quiz is going to look like from the student view. Uh, so we're going to go through and we're going to answer these questions. Uh, and this one is set up to have a certain number of questions on each page. Uh, it's also set up with uh, the shuffling of the questions. So every time you take this, the questions come up in a different order. And it's set up with shuffling of answers. So every time you do the quiz, the questions and the answers come up in a different order. So we are located in Murfreesboro. Um, I am not going to type y'all out a big old response to our fake written question. Just know that that's where you would type that. Um, this is a multiple select question. So mm. you actually get to click more than, than one option um, and uh, see what those look like. And then I am true blue. So that is the quiz. I have taken the quiz. <laughs> um, so when I submit the quiz, it allowed it to show up. This is what it would look like if the student took it. Um, so this quiz, I have it set for the student's initial view uh, when they submit the quiz to show up and give them the questions, their answers, and the correct answers. I set my submission view up on this quiz so that it shows them that automatically when they submit this quiz. So if you are okay with them seeing it automatically, then that is one of the submission views we're going to talk about here in a second. Uh, but this is what it looks like from the student's point of view when they get this quiz. Uh, this is the answers. This is the information that they have. Anybody have any questions about that at this point? And apparently I was late in my submission. I submitted it after the due date. Um, so that is what this one looks like in terms of um, that submission view. Hey, Kim. Yes. Could you um, show them how, what the options are, like, you know, where you made it as a multiple answer? Um, and, and I explained in the chat, you choose this from the same place that you choose true, false, or multiple guess, but yes. it's an option for. Sure. Yeah, no problem. Um, so in that 
where I created the um, multiple choice the first time. Uh -huh. um, and now that I actually have question, have a question in here, I can actually set a couple of additional things. So um, this is also where we set quizzes so that they, um, the questions shuffle at the quiz level. Um, we also can prevent people from moving back and forth between the pages. And as I said, there was one question per page uh, in, in the one that we just took. And so if you want to do that, you do one, apply, and then if you really don't want them going back and forth, you can prevent people from moving back and forth. Um, so this one was a multiple choice, but if we want to do a multiple select, we add or edit questions right here, the same place. And then we add, and our new question will be a multi-select. And then we ask a question here that allows for multiple options, um, that they can select multiple things here. Um, so we use this one a lot for our multiple select because it's very easy. <coughs> Oops. It goes in question text, by the way, not title. And then our options would be blue, white, red sorry it jumped and orange we know it's not orange right um so blue and white are two so to determine that both of those are options that you can select you simply just check the box next to the two that are the correct answers um, and then there are additional options with these um, that you can add hints the same way um, so if we come down here and we allow for a hint. Um, uh, more than one, you know, it is not orange. What was the question about the boxes on the other side from the answer boxes? There's in the chat. You can give automatic feedback right here. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know which boxes they were. Yeah, I think this is the ones that I was asking about. I didn't know yeah. what the boxes were for. So yeah, so you can actually give that feedback. Like earlier when I said, so this is correct. Um, yeah, I always feel like you have to put something if there's a box there. You but, don't. You so don't. I'm like I'm like, do I need something in that box or not? And so that's why some of these questions I've not used because I look at it, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to put in all these boxes because there's like yeah. a thousand boxes. You don't. You don't have to put anything in those boxes. That's a great question because sometimes you're like, why are there so many? Um. You don't, but in this one, if you actually wanted to, you could uh, put the um, the information in them that they are correct or incorrect. Uh, so when the student views it, if they were to uh, select blue and red, um, then it would actually show them that one was correct and one was incorrect um, in their in their information as they were going through it. So um, so that's what that does. Uh, and then we could also give them a hint that says there's more than one and we know it's not orange. So we pretty much gave them one. So if somebody guesses orange, they clearly were not reading any of the information they were given. Um, so that is a multi-select question. Does that help with that? Okay. Okay. So um, I am going to go. Oh, excuse me, Kim. Yeah. On the multi-select can you have any number of possible choices that you want to do six or eight? Yeah, you could add as many as you want. Um, okay. You just add additional options. And so you could have several um, in there that um, depending on what you, you need it to do. So, right. um, I mean, there could be, I guess, um, think trying to think of like foreign language, if you have um, yeah. different, different ways that, um, they might be able to select information like if there's more than one thing that means something um, like hello may actually have three or four different options that it could be same as with English hello hi hey all those things actually do qualify as ways of saying hello um, maybe you have that in a foreign language and you want to give them the opportunity to actually select all of them um, if I want them to give the form of a particular word they choose singular rather than plural they choose subject rather than object and yeah. so i can fill in i so i don't have to do just four where they can guess most of the time but they have to uh 
really apply a little bit more thinking. Yeah, you can add as many as you want. That's good. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, okay, so we have kind of set up a quiz. Um, we have taken a look at, at what that looks like for us um, and some of some of that information. So I'm actually going to come into this one and I am going to show you. Um, I think it's actually I'm just going to change myself to a student and I'm going to take both quizzes because I'm going to show you as a student what the submission views look like and then I'm going to explain to you which setups for submissions um, were which. So looking at the sample quiz one and I'm totally making a note to myself on this. Um, so sample quiz one or the sample quiz for D2L examples. So I'm going to take that quiz as a student. Um, I'm going to start my quiz. I'm going to need D2L to speed up a little bit today. <laughs> uh, we are located in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, so that is true. Um, our mascot is definitely lightning, though the banana slug is a pretty cool mascot. You got to just kind of go with that. Um, our colors, say I told you we use this all the time, are blue and white. Um, and then here's my question. Um, so I'm just going to put COVID as um, the biggest thing that we have achieved as well as our greatest struggle. Um, and so I am now going to submit my quiz. Um, so my quiz has now been submitted. This is the initial default that shows up when I submit that quiz. Um, for this one, it says that it was done. That's what I see as a student. So when I click on this, this is what it shows me. It shows me that I have submitted it. That's fantastic. That At least I know I submitted it. Um, so remembering that just, and just kind of remember that for that one because in a little bit we're going to talk about what that that feedback that submission view information looks like so i'm going to go ahead and take the second one so you can see how it is different um so i'm going to start this quiz hey kim yes can you answer one of the questions on this quiz incorrectly so um they can see what that yeah Um, so this one uh, is one of the examples where it's broken up by multiple pages. So um, you'll notice that we got, uh, when I showed it to you earlier as the preview, this was not question number one. This was like the fourth question. So it's just a way of showing you that this is what happens when you shuffle. Um, so I'm going to my next page. Um, I am going to say that we are located in Nashville. Um, we're not, but I'm going to so show that we're located in Nashville so that you do get a wrong answer. Um, and so next page and, um, I am true blue and then, Hey, look, our same colors question. <laughs> um, but here, let me show you what that looks like, um, as me putting in the wrong information. Oh, that's, I can't do that. That's like Auburn and somebody might be a, a fan <laughs> and get mad. So, uh, does anybody know anybody's blue and purple? Am I going to offend anybody with blue and purple? Uh, so that is my quiz. Uh, and that is what that information looks like. So here I am now going to submit this quiz. This is my confirmation that I am actually submitting this because once it's done, I'm done. So I'm submitting my quiz. And then this is my immediate feedback of what it looks like as a student. If I am going in as a student and I have just submitted my quiz and I have it set for immediate feedback, allowing them to see questions and answers. So this is what it looks like. So I got this one wrong. So it gives me this little X next to Nashville and it actually gives me an arrow that shows me Murfreesboro, which is kind of cool. Um, this one I clearly got right, um, but I got this one wrong. Um, and so that's that's where that it, it saved it as orange. That's why it did that. That's because I did that initially. So, uh, and didn't set it to resave it. So that is what that looks like as a student um, in the, the class, basically. Uh, in a little bit, after I go through some of these um, submission views with you, I'm actually going to log in as a fake student. And I'm going to show you because the fake student information actually looks just a little bit different 
than what I can see as a faculty member logged in as a student. Um, because those hmm. hints that we talked about, um, for me as a as a faculty student, the hint doesn't it doesn't show up the same way for me as it does if I'm logged in as a student. So we're gonna go to quizzes, um, and I'm gonna show you. Uh, the submission view for the one that we just took because it had the automatic submission view to show me the questions and answers from the beginning. Um, so I'm going to uh, go in here and I'm going to edit uh, so that it pops up on that page. And submission view is the next to last one, right? There's not anything. Yeah, the next to last one. Um, and so you have a default submission view that automatically shows up that um, all that says in the default submission view is that your quiz has been submitted, congratulations. So that's that's what your default is. It just tells them that. If you want it to be anything other than that, um, you can change your default view um, if you don't care if your stuff stays open all the time and you don't wanna worry about it. You can change your default view so that the questions and the responses are open and student can see them as soon as it's submitted. If you want to limit the amount of time that a student can see the questions and responses after they submit and you want it to be pretty immediate, then you will create an additional view. And so I created an additional view to create this immediate after submission one. So I'm gonna click on that and let you see what it looks like. Uh, and then if you want, we can actually walk through and create one. So this is the one that is immediate after submission. Um, the, the, diff, the, the way that you want that. So like in, in this case, I set it up so that for 30 minutes after the quiz is submitted, the student will have access to that information. After that 30 minutes, it's closed to them. They cannot see those questions and answers again. So it's only for that 30 minutes and it's only the 30 minutes after that student submits. So that's an important piece of information um, in the difference with some of these submission views that I'm gonna explain is that with this one, it is immediate after the student submits. So if you have your quiz open for 12 hours and you have a student that takes the quiz in that very first 30 minute block, as soon as that student takes that, they have access to the questions and answers for 30 minutes after they have submitted. So it's right away, it's immediate. Now, after they viewed it for that their 30 minutes, they don't have access to it again. So they can't get back in and see it after the time that they see it in that 30 minutes. Um, I mean, they can see as many times as they want in that 30 minutes, but after that 30 minutes is up, they can't see it again. So. I guess it'd be possible for them to like all line up and everybody do it next to each other, but that would take a lot of work. Um, and I don't know how creative they are. And again, that goes back to your tests and what you want from your tests. So um, that is what that one means. Um, when you put that limit on it, as soon as they submit, they get it for 30 minutes. And then they don't get that access again after that 30 minutes is up. It has nothing to do with the end date of or the due date or the end date of the test. It has everything to do with when that student submitted it. But if they know this is going to be the option, student A who takes it first could, after reading uh, what's now available to him, note down, okay, this is the right answer, this is the right answer, this is the right answer, and then email all of his classmates could yep it's possible yep yes so, so it's that's a why good I, way to build community then yes it will build community exactly <laughs> uh, so that that's why i wanted to be really clear on that this 30 minutes has to do with that individual seeing the test for 30 minutes mm -hmm. it is not that it is locked while the uh, test is still open uh, and then this one was set so that they could show questions it is showing all questions and user responses and it is showing their answers and then i'm also showing the score so these are some of your options you can choose different ones so you can show uh, questions that they answered incorrectly you can show um, the ones that they answered correctly you can show them without their response uh, and then you can show them with the question and the response so that is what the 
immediate after submission view looks like. Um, and the big thing to note in there on that one is it's the limited duration is what you check. Uh, and then you say how long you want it to happen. So if 30 minutes is too long, but you want to give them five, give them five. Um, it's however long you want to give them for that to be able to take a look at it. Um, and again, it's immediate. Uh, so that is what that one looks like. Uh, so I want to actually show you the other quiz um, that I took, because uh, if you remember, all it showed me when I clicked back into it was uh, that I had submitted it. It didn't tell me any of that additional information. So um, from this one, when we come in and we look at it and we go to the submission views, these are set up differently. I have the default view set up. And then I have the after quiz closes submission view. And this will allow students to see the, the, all of the questions and their responses, and it shows their answers. Um, but then there's another little one down here that I have to show you after this, but I'm gonna show you what's different about this one first. So when you're setting up so that you want students to be able to see your questions and their answers and the correct answers, after the quiz closes, this is the setup that you are wanting to look at. And again, because I feel like there's a whole lot going on with quizzes, we're gonna send you a cheat sheet that has screenshots and instructions. So don't panic. <laughs> like we are totally gonna make sure that you have that information. Um, so this is the one where it opens after the quiz has ended. So nobody else can take the quiz. This quiz has ended. Nobody else can get in here, but you want to be able to let them see the information about how they did and where they got things wrong and, and what some of the, what the correct answer would have been and, and things like that. So the biggest part that I want to show you on this one is that we do not click the limited duration on this one um, because we're going to set something else up to limit how long it's available. That's what that shutdown is that I showed you. Um, because when you set a limited dur duration, that is tied to when the student submits it. So if we go mm. back to that example that I used of it's open for 12 hours, a student did it in the first 30 minutes. If you set a limited duration on this, it is on the student's submission, not on the end of the quiz. So you do not want to check this if you are allowing them to see it at the end of the quiz. Um, and I again selected all the, yes, I want them to be able to see everything. That is what I need them to be able to do. Um, so I have set this one that um, it probably actually is now available because I think I set it for noon. I did. Um, I set it for noon so that when the quiz closed, it would be able to open up for students and they could see all of that information for the amount of time after the quiz closed. So the biggest thing to remember on this one is just don't click limited duration if you want it available after the quiz. Um, so that's what that one looks like. So we're gonna cancel that one. We're gonna go back to our submission view. So what I mentioned was that um, if you want to limit the amount of time that it is available, then you set up one that's called a shutdown view. So the way that D2L does this um, is that it kind of cascades and it will supersede things based on time that you put into your submission view. So in this scenario, I set my shutdown view that I'm giving my students an hour. So for an hour, they can log in and they can look at all of the questions and all of their responses and all of the answers and, and all of that information. But after that hour is over, it's going to stop. Um, so you'll see uh, when you look at the at my screen, it shows that I have the these are the things they can see. And then I have a shutdown view starting at one o'clock that says they can no longer see anything. It shuts it down for them. So for an hour, they could see everything. But then at one o'clock, it turns off and they cannot get in and see the information anymore. So just to show you what that one looks like, it's it's very, very similar to like your default that was like, no, you can't see anything. You literally just go in and set the time and then you set it to no. And that's all you need to do to shut it down. And that shuts down the submission view that allowed them to see things at that time. So I know that was a whole lot. Um, so 
I know you're going to have some questions. <laughs> um, um, so um, do you want me to try to answer some questions first or do y'all want me to show you what it actually looks like as a fake student view first? Sure. You got to so unmute. I have a question. Sure. So after, so for a particular test, you have to, so I'm making, so I'm, I have my D2L open and I have like just a fake one going up, you know, cause I have tests that my students, you know, as I've written responses and I've allowed them to see the feedback on like their multiple choice and like other things that are automatically graded, they can see those views. Mm -hmm. So for, for this, I have to go in and I have to put a after test closes condition and a shutdown view condition. So if they, each test has to have both of those conditions that I set within it. And so I'm assuming I have to let the students know, hey, on this day during this one hour period, you get to view your test. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So how do you, as a professor, like how do you select like that one hour time frame so that it's like, you know, because I know I'm gonna have this student be like, well, I work during that one hour or I have another class or do you know what I do you understand what I'm saying? So how do you how do you set it like that so that it's more accommodating? Sorry, my camera just like no. <laughs> It's okay. Um, right. Over here. Right. Right. The struggles roll sometimes with technology. Um, I wish there was like a window I could give them. I wish I could give them a 12 hour window where they get one hour or 30 minutes or whatever to look over their test. I mean, you can't do that though, can you? No. Probably if you create a whole bunch of submission views, you could set it up so that it does do that. Um, that would be a lot though. I mean, but there's but, not. Yeah. I think at that point you're creating a lot of work for yourself. Yeah. Um, so Jennifer, do you have any ideas on that? Oh, you're like, uh. <laughs> and, and just to, to be completely forthcoming about this, to me, this is one of the glitchiest parts of D2L is trying to provide, we're, we're getting several questions about how students can see um, feedback when it's published. And this is a very common question we get in the FITSE of how, because it's just so persnickety. There are so many options. To me, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you can create a submission view where you just have, like you were showing in the first one, where you just mm -hmm. have students can access. So say I take the quiz and I'm done and I want to review my results and there's nothing, it's auto graded. If we have it set for them to be able to look at it for five minutes, then they can look at it immediately right then for five minutes and then they're done. They can't right. react. To it. But if there's something that you have to grade, then they're not going to know when to go, when you've gotten it graded, unless you email every student and say, hey, your test is graded, you can look at it now. So you might could do something um, very, very early in the semester saying, okay, I will send you an email um, when I'm going to have your test graded. And typically this is going to be on a Monday after 5 p.m. And so you could send them an email every Monday if you grade on Sundays and say, okay, you have from five to seven to access your test. But I guarantee you, you're going to get 50 emails saying, oh, I had to work that night. Not, you know, so to me, I don't know that, um, what I would what I would do is I would still set that parameter for them to have 30 minutes or however long you want to give them to review your feedback and then not have a, a hard stop on that. That was just what I would do. And I don't yeah. think that's a perfect answer, but um, that would be better than having, a, you know, just a one hour window for everybody, because I think that's, you know, one of the reasons to at least before the pandemic students took classes remotely was so that they could have the liberty and the autonomy to to access content assessments yep. whatever at, at their leisure so um i i think uh, to me i think that would create more work uh, for yes. professors when you set that really limited time restriction on them viewing their results oh yeah and i don't actually set a shutdown uh and the few times i actually use quiz settings that it's not just automatically open from the default. I don't set a shutdown because of that. Um, but that again goes back to um, how are you creating your assessments? Um, what type of questions are you using? How are you setting those questions? Um, things like that. So it, it really kind of depends on you or you can always set it so that it shuts down at a later point. Um, and some of that too is um, general the general feedback they get from you grading it is different from the question 
feedback. So when you go in and you enter specific feedback on a question that's tied to that question in that quiz, the general feedback that you put in through grades is much more generic um, and isn't locked from view. So that's one thing to think about too is where and how are you giving your feedback so that the students can see the most feedback in the most available place. Um, is it individual question feedback that is going to be the best? Um, or is that individual question feedback uh, more related to uh, things like the multiple choice items or your true, false, or your multiple selects, but your written responses, uh, you are taking longer to grade those and you want students to have that feedback in a greater area for a greater amount of time. You may want to put that into the general grading feedback and only give them the access to the part that hasn't been graded yet. So I don't know if y'all noticed uh, when we looked at my submission, but it showed that I had like four out of eight um, on one of them because the written hadn't been graded. So if you set your submission view that students can see the auto graded part, uh, but not the written, uh, then that can also change some of that too. You can also set things up so that you have two completely separate quizzes that one is much more of an auto graded short answer, true, false, uh, and they only get that information for a limited amount of time. And then you have one that is more written uh, more written response, more essay question kind of information that you have a completely different setup for submission view so that when you grade that, that submission is open for a much greater amount of time. Because my guess is, is that the concern of them being able to see it is probably more with those things that are multiple choice um, and true, false and things like that, that you don't want them to be able to take that whole page and send it to somebody else. But their essay questions, those are going to be so varied in response, uh, depending on your questions, but they're going to be much more varied in response. Uh, and you're probably not as concerned about that question being available out to the world because that one is much more about student application of information. And in order for them to learn how to write that response, they're going to have to learn how to do whatever that thing is anyway. Um, so it's not necessarily as big of a, an issue if that question is out in the world. So those are some of the, when I was saying earlier about thinking about how you're setting up your tests and, and what is it that you're trying to get from a, those are some of those things that you do have to look at is why am I limiting all of it or why am I limiting some of it or are there ways that I can create those, those parameters uh, that make it best for my students to be able to view. Hey, Kim, real quick, and I, I don't want to jump ahead of you, but are you going to uh, show how to, when you uh, provide feedback, how the students can see that? Um, we had a question about that, and we get a lot of questions about that in the FITSI. And then also, before you get out of that, could you real quickly show them just the, the button that they choose for the complete shutdown, what you were calling the shutdown submission? The view? shutdown view? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Asked, I was like, that's Kim's name for it. <laughs> right. It's the shutdown view. Um, so all it is is that you put the time on it that you want it to shut down and then you sh set it to no. Okay. That's so it. Time and no. Yep. Just time and no. And that shuts it down. Um, okay. So yeah, shut down view because it shuts it down and then you'll know what it was in there for. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. Um, so as a faculty member, um, I'm going to go in. Um, and I think, oops, that's not what I want to, my bad, pay no attention to me. Sometimes I just click the wrong buttons. That's how it works with me sometimes. Um, so I'm going to go in cause I think my fake, yeah, my fake student has one in here. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you some feedback, uh, and putting feedback in from the faculty perspective on this student's attempt. Um, so this is, this is my feedback page. This is what this looks like. Can everybody see it? Okay. Um, so this is what that, that exam looked like. Um, and then we get down here, um, and this is the one that I need to add some information into. So if I put, um, very brief, need more. Because you saw, you know, my 
my written response was the word example. Um, so it's not really a very great written response. So, um, so I'm going to put that information in there and I'm going to give them a one because this person did not do a very good job uh, expanding on what I needed them to talk about in the written response. Of course, I also did a really bad job of asking a question because it literally just says written. Um, so there is, do not use this written as an example of a, how to write a good written <laughs> response question. This is the opposite of what you should do. Um, so. Um, this is what this looks like from the faculty's perspective in uh, the feedback section. So that one is very specific. It is on that question um, and it is set in that question. So I'm going to update this and I'm going to then show y'all um, a little bit more about what it looks like. So um, you can also add general feedback into the attempt feedback box, and this is much more general. Um, it's not specific to the question. It's it's more for the entire quiz. So this one would be um, great overall, but need more in written. And also we need to learn how to spell. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to update that. And this is all in my fake student one and what theirs looks like. Um, so I have graded this student. I have put this student in there. I've put their information in there. So I'm now actually going to go and I'm going to log out. Um, and I am going to log back in as my fake student so that you can see this from the student's perspective in these different quizzes as well as what their feedback looks like. Uh, and then we can come back again um, and look at it from the faculty perspective in a little bit, but I want to actually show you all the student's perspective. Don't tell anybody in the FITC that I saved this password. <laughs> I can't remember it. It's weird, so I can't remember it. So I am now logged in as fake student. Um, so I want to see the feedback that I was given on the quiz that, that as a faculty member, I just did that. So here is, it was it this one? Does anybody remember which one I took? Um, so we'll look at this one because I think this might have been it. Um, so here's my attempt one. Here's my individual and here's my little bubble. Um, and this little bubble says, lets me know as a student that there's some feedback in there. So I can now click on this. Um, and it will give me that information. So this is one of the ones that's locked. I can no longer see this feedback in my attempts. Um, so that's an important piece of information because it's locked. It's past the time that it was available uh, from when the submission happened. And this one, this one is, this one's locked. So it's because I set those parameters. So I'm going to take it again. Um, this one I can take at least two more times. So I'm going to take it again. I'm going to show you what it looks like from the student's perspective. I'm going to get some wrong for you. I'm going to get a lot wrong. We're going to fail this. Okay, so now I'm submitting my quiz. It has been submitted. Um, so this one is the one that gives me automatic feedback right at that time. So in this one, um, when I went in and I typed in the, the feedback, if that had been ahead of time where this one says this has not been graded, when I was talking about earlier about when you give them feedback and how you give them feedback, if you separate out your written responses, then you can set completely different parameters on them. Um, but this is this is what this looks like from the student's perspective. Um, and then I'm going to do it one more time because I want to show you just a couple just a couple of other things. Um, I'm going to do it one more time as the student because this one has I think this one does. It may be my assessment. I think I have to go into the it does. I'm just kidding. Ignore me. 
pay no attention. Um, so I'm going to go to content. I'm going to show you something from the student's perspective because we were talking about hints and feedback. Um, we actually set those up in one of the self-assessments. Do you all know about self-assessments in D2L? Um, you can actually find them in edit course. Um, so self-assessments are pretty awesome if you want students to check things as they go. But self the self-assessment that we put in here that you would take before you take the quiz. Um, so I'm going to show you what the hints and feedback look like. So if you're a student and you're taking something that has hints enabled in it and you see MTSU colors are blue and black, is this true or false? Um, I'm not really sure. Um, I can actually check my answer right here and I can see, oh, it's false. Um, because I put, there's a hint in here that tells them in the self-assessment that allows that. So here is the automatic feedback that I showed you where it says correct incorrect if you put automatic feedback when they click on the right one it says correct if i click on the wrong one it tells me this one's incorrect you can find the answer in one of the resources in module one same with any of these others so um so this one uh, does anybody know what year mtsu was founded I mean, I know, but I kind of want to show you what, what happens if you click the wrong one. So this one, so that's the wrong answer. So the information that it gives me is my automatic feedback is that that's not the right answer. It was founded in another decade um, or for another decade. So we know that this is the right one for correct, um, but it actually has different feedback responses for each of the different questions. Um, so that when I showed you that feedback and those hints earlier, that's what those look like uh, when you put the information in here. So for this one, three primary types of academic misconduct, you would type three things in there. Here's my hint. It says, if you don't recall this, refer to your syllabus under academic integrity and misconduct section. So that's what a hint looks like to a student. So when I was discussing earlier about putting a hint in there and you could say, hey, remember we talked about this um, in this lecture or we covered this uh, in the textbook or whatever. If you're open note in your open book um, or if it's something that it's kind of confusing for students and you want to give them a little bit of a hint to help them get to that place that you're trying to help them get to on a, a fairly difficult topic that for you it's more about how they apply it but you want to give them that little bit of information a hint some way that you can really kind of prod them along to help them remember oh this is when we talked about that or this is what that's related to or this is what that concept was so it's not super arbitrary um that they, they don't necessarily feel as much like i'm just guessing um if you're giving them some of those hints and prompts it really does help them hey, Kim, especially on um, more difficult concepts yeah willing to ask um can you only do that immediate feedback in the self-assessment mode no that's what those um the feedback in the other quiz um so i will i don't I'll see if I can get to it from this, but I think I hid it from myself. Um, so I may not be able to see, I do that. Um, I think the other quiz that I created with y'all um, as the faculty member was hidden, so this student won't be able to get to it. Um, my fake student won't be able to see it. Um, but yeah, those hints, the hints that I did in that one that was like, this is the hint or this is the feedback, that will show up in any of those. Uh, anytime you put that feedback in, anytime you put those hints in, it will show up in the quiz or self-assessment, both places. Uh, so I'll just, um, I'm going to click them all. So I know it's not actually accurate, but uh, I'm going to click them all and then I'm going to show you what the hint looks like. So in this one, the hint mm -hmm. is actually the True Blue Pledge and there it is. And it says, this is what it is. And it says, Charity, while it might be implied, is not actually part of the True Blue Pledge. So um, it may be implied in the information and the actual wording of the pledge, but it's not specific. Um, so um, you would go back and change that before you submitted it. So, and this is, again, this was a self assessment. So um, they're looking to learn as they go. So it's really great if you want people to take a practice test or you're really looking for some formative assessment um, along the way 
um, and how the students might get there. Um, does anybody have any more questions before I log out as the student and back in as the faculty member? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and log out as a student back in as a faculty member. Again, don't anybody tell the people in the FITSE that I have my passwords saved in here. It's only because I knew I was going to be switching people. Um, so, okay. I think that I covered all of the basics that I needed to cover. And again, um, before we get to the end of this, because we've only got a couple minutes left, um, we are going to send you that that cheat sheet. Um, so you're not going to be able to to you're not going to be going through this by yourself like we really did like step by step this is if this is what you want it to do these are the things you need it to say if this is what you want it to do this is what you need to say so we're going to show you that but sometimes looking at those without actually seeing us go through it can be a little bit overwhelming um, and then if you have questions we're going to be around to answer those questions so um so what kind of questions do y'all have in these last couple of minutes do we cover just about everything, Jennifer, in the chat? It looks uh, like a huge chat. So, yeah, question, <laughs> um, um, like when you respond to your students, setting that you know how you have to release the feedback. Mm -hmm. I think that's that was one of the questions, like grading essays and responding to the students. How you have to you know set that feedback to be released to them. I don't know if you have a quiz set up where you can do that on here. The publish feedback part. Yeah. So it, with the quiz, it doesn't automatically, so if I write individual, so has she had that essay question and she wrote that feedback, it doesn't automatic, like when I, like, well, right now they're not able to see it because I don't have it set up so they can see it, but when I do set it up so they can see it, it doesn't automatically, they can't like automatically see that, that feedback. You have to release. Like, the feedback. You have to release the feedback. So, and I'm going to show you how to do that when you're in. Uh, when you're on your quizzes and you go to grade. So I am ready to publish my feedback for all of these people. So the, if you're done with everybody's grading and you're ready to do it, the fastest and easiest way to do it is to click the button in the top left corner and then hit publish feedback. And it will publish the feedback to all of the students. I think the reason it does that is because, you know, sometimes the, the students in class will talk and if mm -hmm. you're grading essays, especially I, when I used to do that, I would have them divided. I would, I would do seven was my magic number. It was all I could get through before I needed a break. And I wouldn't want to, you know, get the first seven talking to the last seven and, you know, saying I have my grade. And then I'd start getting emails about, well, my friend got her grade and I don't have mine where it. So I would want to kind of keep that hidden until I had them all done. And I think that's kind of the, the justification for having to publish your feedback, you know, for everybody simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've been doing. So that's been, I mean, granted, they still can't see the test after that, but I do the same thing to you. I don't post any grades until the whole assignment's graded for the whole class. Cause then you just get like, mm -hmm. yeah, the exact same thing. You get, bombarded with emails of like why don't I have a zero on this well I haven't gotten to yours yet that's why right okay. so I've been doing it right once I allow them to actually yeah. see it. yes so they can yes. see their grade on the test they just can't see any of my feedback as far as so the grades of everything have been published they just don't have access back to the test or quiz to be able to see their feedback on the written responses now on the stuff that's automatically graded they have that automatic feedback to be able to see that yeah if that's how yours is set Yes. Yeah. Yes. Melinda, um, what, do you want to ask your question? I'll read it from the chat. It says, I'm still uncertain how to activate settings for immediate feedback per question as they answer versus getting the feedback on all questions at once when the quiz is completed. Okay. Um, my goal is to get that immediate feedback during the quiz while they're answering. I know how to do the other submission view, but I'm not, I still don't know how to activate the per question feedback. So, um, this was the one I need to turn this off so that, um, so this was the one that I was slowly creating questions as we went along and we were putting some feedback in as we went along. Um, so there's not a lot of questions here, but, um, as the student is taking the test, if you have auto feedback um, or hints, 
then they will show up as they are taking the test. Um, so this was the one you asked me because it was only in self-assessments. Um, so this is the one that I, I think I put it in both. Um, I think I put it in here. Um, let's, oops, look, y'all, when you click the same button three times in a row and it does the same thing, you know what that means? You're not clicking the right button. <laughs> I'm sure y'all have never had that happen. Um, so this was the one that I had put the automatic, a little bit of automatic feedback into it as we were going. Um, and I've had a hint as well as the feedback. So um, I have now made this one viewable um, for a student. So I will go ahead and log myself back in as the fake student so you can actually see what that question what that looks like um, as the student because I didn't have that previously sorry about that um, okay so here is my quiz and I'm gonna pop in here and I'm gonna take this quiz as my fake student um, so, um, here is this information, but here is where I said, view the hint. And I had a hint on this one. Um, so it was, it's more than one and we know it's not orange. Um, so that was what, what my hint was on this one. I had, um, a hint that said it's the same day as Jennifer's presentation. Um, and I put, um, automatic feedback on this one. Um, and I guess it's not, I must not actually save that automatic feedback. I must not have turned on the automatic feedback. I bet is what I did. Um, and then there's this one. Um, and then when I submit the quiz and it shows up, it shows because I, I don't have any restrictions on it. I didn't turn on the feedback is what happened there. On that automatic feedback, they can't change their answer, can they, after they see the feedback? Nope. I didn't nope. think so. Okay. No. No. Um, and it'll show up like if you have it so that it's set for automatic. What that does um, with the automatic feedback with the quiz, um, and that's probably wise because I don't have my feedback views. With the quiz, the automatic feedback doesn't show up until they submit it and look at it as a submission view. Um, the hints show up as you're going. The feedback in a quiz doesn't show up until they've submitted it and they're looking at the submission view. So um, that's where if you want it to show that feedback in a quiz, in a self-assessment, it shows it as you go. In a quiz, it shows it after it's submitted. But hints show all along. Does that help? Yeah. But this probably, has to know probably to totally misspoke it. earlier. Do what? The student has to know to click on the hint though. It doesn't, it, like it doesn't unfold, like expand, like, you know what I right. mean? Right. Um, I mean, it, it says click here for more, but they, I, I don't know that they'll know and unless they know that it's there. So, I mean, it, it may be one of those things that you may want to, the first time you're using it in your, your tests or in your quizzes or whatever, kind of put that in their in, information of, hey, if you ever see this, it means there might be a hint. Yeah. Uh, there might be a tip that will help you through this. Um, Cause when, um, when it's there, it shows, I don't think I can take it a second time. Um, at least not as a fake student. Um, when it shows, uh, I don't know if y'all saw it, but it was like, click here for more information on question one or click yeah. here. For, so it shows that as the student. So if they're paying attention, they may see that. Because if click on not it, a hint, it, obviously it's not going to have that down there. It's just going to be. Right. It's not going to have that. Right. You would right. think they'd pay attention to that and see that, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to put money on it, like right. put money that I'm going to have to tell them that if I'm going to use that tool that they need to do that. Yes. Yes. Um, some of the things I've seen with that um, in some classes, um, if it's a, I've seen people put equations in there um, where it's that they want pe students to be able to do, to find out what it is, but knowing the, memorizing the equation wasn't the important part. It was knowing how to put the different items into the equation and then get the answer to that equation. So sometimes I've seen people put the equation is in as the hint um, because they'll talk about, hey, this is what you need to be doing or here's the question. What is the 
whatever for for this thing and then instead of it having the equation in the question it's actually a hint so it's possible the students remember the equation or they know how to do it uh, but if not hey here's the equation because what's important for me to be assessing in this question is that you know how to plug the information into the equation and find the answer not that you memorize the equation so but again that goes back to the need of the question and the type of test and and it all varies based on the person and what they're trying to assess. So, does that help? Okay. What other questions does everybody have? I know we're a little bit past our time. Um, I'm, I'm happy to stay um, for as long as y'all need me to. Um, I well, a question I had, and I had <laughs> asked, I had asked it in chat, and I think Jennifer, I think this was the link that you sent me, Jennifer, and I went to it about monitoring so like I have I have a test and I graded it and I feel some student I have two students whose answers are very very similar or like they've missed similar things and they're like essay questions so I mean it's not like just like the multiple choice and stuff like that and so I have their times of when their the timestamp of when their test was submitted I wonder if there's a way I could look to see and I know and I'm looking through this I'm like I don't maybe I'm just not very smart I can't figure out how to follow through like these instructions of how to go and look specifically like on each question like when they submitted it and stuff like that because there's a three minute time difference between when they actually submitted the test which all students they have the same window so I mean that's not I mean that's not really I don't know I mean so I don't know if there's a way to do that and I mean how do you I, I feel like right now in the place that we're in as far as like you know, cheating, because it's like, they can use their notes. And I'm like, if you're smart and you have your stuff organized, I mean, my tests are written, so they can't pass them if they just purely cheat, because they have to put stuff together. Right. Like they have to use, like, integrate information, and it's like applied stuff. I mean, there is a level that they can cheat on in the test and, like, look in their notes. But how do you, how do you, like, like, these two students, it's like their answers are, like, on one section, they missed exactly the same thing. And I, I none of the other students like missed exactly the same things. Like it was. Yeah, you can do that. Um, you just go into under course administration. Do you know how to get there under edit? Oh. Hang on. Kim, can you show you this? Yeah, I was, I'll, I'll try to walk you through it. Go to course home and then course edit, edit course at the very end. Edit course. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then under that course administration. Okay, I see course administration. And so then I do. Class progress. Class progress. And I think this is where it's going to show you their individual tests. So is class pro progress going to be like a little blue thing? Oh, here it is. I see. Under learner management. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, Sorry. if it. Okay. Let me look at Kim's screen. So I do it this way. Um, I got. I, I got a class list okay. uh -huh. and then I pick the student um, and then I view progress of the individual student um, and then I go to the item of quizzes okay. um, and then you can look at very specific. So when you went before you so, didn't click on class progress, you clicked on, on what? Specific? I clicked on class list. Um, because I wanted to look at one individual and the specific information on that one individual. So I click on class list. Um, and that's under not communication. Slides. It's communication. under communication and I go to class list. And then I, I want to look at um, my fake student one and what they did. So I am going to view their progress. Oh, I see. It's under learner management. Is this under, okay. Mine may be. So I just click on a specific like on the side, the specific student. Yeah, you can click on the individual student. It, there's multiple ways to get to class progress. Um, that's the big thing. You can get there a bunch of different ways. You can even get to it from assessment. Yeah, you could do it through quizzes to look at that. Mm -hmm. and you can do I it through do quizzes. It through can... And I couldn't figure out. I couldn't figure out how to do it. The I'm class not... progress page. Yeah, I'm. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm. I'm. There's some things I feel like I feel pretty confident about on on detail and there's some stuff where I'm just. So the biggest thing is when you click on the student and then you click on the, the item within the student. Um, so if we click on quizzes, then we're gonna go down here and I'm gonna expand my detail on this one. And I'm gonna look at the specific information um, about 
that student in that quiz. So. Okay. And it will actually tell you when each question was saved. It'll time. Mm -hmm. Okay. It time times. It's like so slow right now. Okay, I see. So then I can go specifically on question. Okay. And y'all do know the difference between login history and course access while we're looking at this page. Login history is D2L, course access is that class. Um, so if you're clicking on login history and it looks like your students logging in like crazy, but they haven't done anything in your class, they may be logging into D2L, but they may not be going in your class. So course access is your course. Login history is D2L. I, got, I have another call, so I have to jump off, but it was good. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. And if you have extra yeah. questions that we didn't get to, if you can send those to me, I would appreciate it. I think we got, I think and you I'll got them. Um, yeah. the big thing that everybody is wanting is the cheat sheet and then the link yep. to the recording. So I told them yes. you would send that to us. So thanks. Yeah, Y'all have a great we'll do day. It. Thanks guys. Bye. Thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> okay. I'm going to actually stop my share. Um, and I'm actually going to stop my recording at this point. Um.